Hey everybody, we're going to talk about Homer's Odyssey. Today I want to talk about the frequent references to Agamemnon in Homer's Odyssey, as well as the references to this guy Aegisthus and Agamemnon's son, Orestes. We hear about the death of Agamemnon almost right away in the poem. Zeus brings it up early in Book 1, when he says, This is absurd, that mortals blame the gods. They say we cause their suffering, but they themselves increase it by folly. So Aegisthus overstepped. He took the legal wife of Agamemnon, then killed the husband when he came back home, although he knew that it would doom them all. We gods had warned Aegisthus. Orestes would grow up and come back to his home to take revenge. And again, later in Book 1, when Athena is disguised as Mentes and in conversation with Telemachus, she asks Odysseus' son, You surely heard how everybody praised Orestes when he killed the man who killed his famous father, Devious Aegisthus? So why do we keep hearing about the murder of Agamemnon in this poem about Odysseus? To understand that, we need to go back in time, back even before the Trojan War began. Agamemnon is married to a woman named Clytemnestra, and they have four children, Orestes, Iphigenia, Electra, and Chrysotemus. First, we need to focus on the story of Iphigenia. When the Greeks first decided to wage war against the Trojans, they ran into a problem. There was no wind. They couldn't sail their ships to Troy. Eventually, the Greeks find out that the goddess Artemis is angry with Agamemnon, and in order to appease her, he needs to sacrifice his daughter Iphigenia. So, in exchange for the winds that will get him to Troy, Agamemnon kills his own daughter. This is all important background to Agamemnon's character. If you've read the Iliad, you know him to be a savage and violent person, and the murder of his own daughter is just another instance of that. But I also think the murder of Iphigenia tells us something about Agamemnon's motivation. Remember, during the war, he seems to be the most desperate to win. Part of that may be Agamemnon's greed, but it might also be because he's sacrificed so much in order to be there. Now jump to the end of the Trojan War. Agamemnon returns triumphant to Mycenae. He brings with him riches and prizes, including Priam's daughter Cassandra as a slave. Imagine Clytemnestra. Agamemnon returns, Cassandra in tow. Her husband is the man who murdered her daughter. What Agamemnon doesn't know is that during the war, his wife Clytemnestra began an affair with a man named Aegisthus. And shortly after he returns home, because of who Agamemnon is and because of everything he's done, his wife Clytemnestra and her lover Aegisthus conspire to murder him. This is where Agamemnon's son Orestes enters the story. Outraged by his father's murder, Orestes gets revenge. He kills Aegisthus, and he kills his own mother, Clytemnestra. So news of this scandal travels around Greece. This is what everybody is talking about. And so we keep hearing about it in the poem. For example, in Book 3, Nestor brings it up to Telemachus. And Agamemnon? You must have heard, though you live far away, that just this murdered him. But he has paid a bitter price. How fortunate the dead man had left a son to take revenge upon the wicked, scheming killer that had just this who killed Orestes' father. And later in the poem, when he travels to the underworld, Odysseus will hear this story too from Agamemnon himself. The floor swam thick with blood. I heard the desperate voice of Priam's daughter, poor Cassandra, whom deceitful Clytemnestra killed beside me. As I lay dying, struck through by the sword, I tried to lift my arms up from the ground. That she-dog turned away. I went to Hades. She did not even shut my eyes or close my mouth. There is no more disgusting act than when a wife betrays a man like that. Now, in order to understand what this story means, we have to think about what it signifies for Telemachus and for Odysseus. 
So let's think about Telemachus. Telemachus is encouraged over and over to be like Orestes, to take on the suitors in the same way Orestes took on Aegisthus, to stand up for the honor of his family, and particularly his father. Now consider Odysseus and how he must feel when he hears the story of Agamemnon. Odysseus has been away for 20 years, and he's done some objectively terrible things. He's engineered the destruction of an entire city and a people. He hasn't been faithful to his wife. Odysseus has to wonder what it's going to be like when he returns to Ithaca, and if the welcome he receives there is going to be the same welcome Agamemnon got. Is Penelope waiting for him, or is she waiting to betray him? The story of Agamemnon's death is the story of a family torn apart by infidelity and violence. It functions as a kind of cautionary tale for Odysseus. The news of how Agamemnon died is going to influence how Odysseus comes home, specifically the kinds of precautions he takes. But the story inspires deeper questions too. Because Homer seems to indicate that Agamemnon got what he deserved. He was a bad man who reached a bad end. So the story prompts us to consider what kind of ending does a man like Odysseus deserve?